Hi everyone, it's Christina Alexandra here and in this video I would like to talk about Parad grading. So let's start with actually is grading and why should businesses actually set up and use Parad grading functionality in their Parad org. So you have probably heard two terms at this point, scoring and grading. So I'm going to break it down for you. So scoring is how prospect or visitor is interested in you as a business. Based on the score, you can judge how often, how much, how frequently they have visited and they have engaged with all your assets that you have. How many times they have visited your landing pages, how many times they have submitted the forms, how many times they have downloaded your assets, clicked on links, opened your emails. So based on that part of scoring that you have set up in your org and based on how many actions they did, you are gonna see the accumulative score of everything that they have done. Uh, obviously, subject to if you potentially also use scoring categories, you might then see breakdown of those scores. And that's all about part of scoring. So now let's get back to the grading, the core topic of this video. So grading is how much this prospect is actually valuable for you as a business and how much you as a business should pay attention to this prospect. And you will be able to make that decision based on the grade they get. So if it's a prospect with a grade B or A, you're very much interested in them. If their grade is F, E, D, hmm, maybe, maybe not, depending on the volumes that you have. So now let's go to my examples. Let's go to my screen and dive deeper. So here's just a brief example that I found on the internet. It's a part of official image. And you can see that uh, this man here, he's from a small company, industry, technology, department marketing, position manager. So when you are gonna start understanding and breaking down all the possible customer types that you have as a business, and for every business, this will be very different you're going to understand what are those potential profiles that you'll be setting up in Pardot to then based on those automate your grading automation. So now I'm going to go into my actually recent blog post that I wrote. And to set up Pardot grading in your Pardot org, you will need Excel spreadsheet, obviously your time and patience, you will need to use Pardot Profiles feature and you will need to use Pardot Automations. So now I will go into the process of setting up Pardot grading step by step. So first thing first, what you will need to do is you will need to sit down by yourself or with your marketing team and understand what are those all potential customer profiles, customer types that you have as a business. Here in my example, I have wrote down four potential profiles that I can have if I am potentially an online learning business. So if I'm online learning business, potentially all types of customers that can get in touch with me can be businesses. And then meaning these businesses will going to have more than one person in the company. These can be other educational institutions, schools, universities, etc., etc., or these can be individuals or these can be students. So these will be my four profiles. At this point, you will need to sit down and understand what will be your type of customers that usually get in touch with you. The next step for you will be to understand what are those various criteria you will be grading your prospect on. So these criteria can be department, job title, industry, years in a business, annual revenue, product, or their location. And here I have like a very brief uh, example that can maybe help you. 
So this is the persona and here around you can see those potential criteria that can influence and affect their grade. So when you have put down all your potential customer profiles and all the values that you want to use to grade your prospects, either uplift their score or lower their score based on the answer that they were gonna give you, you will gonna go uh, and add all these possible variations and answers to the fields that can have. So here, for example, for me, first field is a region. So potentially my business is operating in these three different regions or I'm operating in one region, but I can get all the customers from these various different regions. You will need to include all the values that prospect can potentially submit through your website or employee can manually enter them uh, in Salesforce or Pardot. And you'll also need to make sure either all these fields are always required or you will need to consider in your automation rules if there is a blank value still uh, basically uplift or lower their score based on whether there is or there is not value. Otherwise, you're going to have blanks on a grade field for a couple of prospects if they will be missing the value. Uh, and you will not uh, foresee them missing value in your automation rules. So now the next step for you will be to finalize your Excel table with the column that is uplift or lower by, and here you will specify if the value that they submit is America, uplift by one. If their job level, job title is A level, uplift by one and you're going to add all these variations for each of the answers to make sure you get a clear picture and here i also have used like color grading to identify and be very clear for myself that for me business is the most valuable profile so i want to make sure uh, because the default grade for every prospect when they were going to enter your platform will be D. I want to make sure with all my highest, uh, with all my best answers that the prospect can get, their score will become A+. Plus. And then I also want to make sure that with the least favorable answers for the business, their profile will be F-. minus. So you will need to kind of choose um, all the possible values and all the possible variations to make sure all your calculations even out and you get like a really wide spectrum. So it's very easy for your marketing and sales teams to actually understand all these grades. So now when you have created all your spreadsheet with all your profiles, with all your fields and with all the values, we will now go inside your part out. So first thing first, in part out, you will need to go and create and set up all your profiles. So every time you will be setting up a new profile, you will be going to marketing, segmentation, profiles. And for each profile, in my case, these will be four different profiles. I will need to create this profile. And to be able to create profile, all you need to know is the profile name, for me, this will be business. And in this profile, I will need to include all the possible variations that I have specified and the letters. And then at this stage, when you will be creating these um, possible variations, you might have a question and an answer. Oh, but what about I have here zero? Or what about I have here minus two, uh, sorry, minus uh, two thirds? So in this case, uh, if you're going to open this uh, pick list option, you're going to see you have only three options. So in a scenario when you're going to need to use zero, you're going to select any value. Or if you will need to have minus one, you are going to select one. But further, we're going to use automations to do the opposite functionality. So now after you have set up everything in the spreadsheet, you have clarity with all the possible profiles that you have and all the possible variations, you'll go inside Pardot and you are going to create all the possible profiles in Pardot. Now, 
when you have set up all your profiles in Pardot, you will need to create automation rules for each of these profiles. So in my example, because I had four different profiles, I will need to create four separate automation rules to set each of these profiles. And how we can set these profiles is obviously we need to make sure we use a field and those values that are in that field that we know always will be populated for every prospect, for every lead we get in our system. So that's why uh, I really probably would like to stress at this point, uh, if you choose to go this kind of different profile route, you will need to have a pick list on each of the forms or in Salesforce, if somebody is entering it manually, it will need to be a required field to specify who they are, business, uh, institution, individual or student or whatever it might be for you. If potentially you don't need to overcomplicate things uh, in terms of having different profiles, you can just use one default profile, but you will still need to make sure you enter all these possible criteria. So in a scenario, if you don't care about the profile, but you just care about the grade, you still create all these possible variations and you'll always go with the default profile. So then in your case, you'll have only one automation rule to set up the profile because profile needs to be set for every prospect that enters Pardot system. So in my case, I'm showing you a sample automation rule that is setting up the profile for the prospect. And I will need to create this action four times, one time for each profile. And finally, the last step to set up Pardot grading automation, you will need to create automation rule for each possible variation. And what that means, so you will need to create automation rule for each possible scenario that can happen. So I will need to have first automation for business, America, A level Y, America, A level Z, America, A level X, then EMEA, A level Z, EMEA, A level X, and so forth. So you will need to have automations for each of these possible variations that can influence that grade. Potentially, if you see that all these values are overlaying and they are the same, you can combine automation rules, but you will need to figure that out. So you will need to have a list of all the possible variations. So if I, would be, if I would be creating automation rules, I would actually create a separate line for each of the possible variation rules to make sure I can follow how many different automation rules I need to create to make sure all my values are used to either uplift or, or lower uh, prospects grade. And here is the all the possible ranges. So you have seven different ranges that can be. And then when you're setting up automation rules in the grading, you're gonna see all these three different options. So match, does not match, or not known. Match will gonna mean if you have set in your previous automation rule to uplift by one, match will mean that it will gonna match and uplift exactly by one. If you will gonna select does not match, it will gonna do the opposite. So does not match will mean it will gonna do minus one. And if you're gonna select not known, it will gonna mean it will do nothing. So this option will be perfect if you want to use zero, meaning not change prospects grade at all. I have created a step-by-step -step guide how to set up prospects grade on the website. I'm going to add the link in the description box below. Uh, make sure you use it. It has all the exact steps that I shared with you in this video. If in case you have any questions, please let me know. I know the setup can be a little bit finicky. In the beginning, many, many years ago, it also took me a while to actually get my head around and understand all the logic. If you think that you need to create many automation rules to make sure your grading 
is working, then you're on the right track, you're correct. Yes, uh, it will take uh, many automation rules to actually get all these profiles uh, and grades right because you will need to have automation rules to set up your profile. You will need to have automation rules to set the profile to the prospect and you will need to have automation rules for each of these variations to actually uplift or lower the grade. So in total, uh, there will be a lot. Don't get scared of that you are completely on the right track and then please use this guide and i hopefully it will going to answer all the questions and it will guide you through all the process the best of luck bye